Alright. Okay, good afternoon. So we will continue discussing, okay? Right now about social media tools or social network tools. Eh? What are the things that are available at the disposal of different enterprises or organizations, tools that they can use in order to further their enterprises agenda using social media. Right? For those who are there this morning, we have looked at one of those tools, which is Foxonomy. Okay? This one is essentially on the usage of hashtags, right? As a means to help organization to further improve their ability to do segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Okay? Now we want to look at two other tools that are available for organizations to be used in order to further their agenda. Okay? Number one is Wiki. Okay? And the other one is of course something that I'm sure most of you are familiar with, blogs. Right? Now, let us look at Wiki first. Right? Now, of course, when it comes to Wiki, one very, uh, what do you call that?
So, if you put a limit on the auto, it becomes credible. Okay? Yeah, no, you are not wrong. Okay? Actually, that's the problem. The, the only major problem with Wikipedia is not really the fact that the information is false or true. It is the fact that the information on Wikipedia is not attributable. Who is saying what? We don't know. But from a book, from a journal, from a uh, newspaper article, you can attribute that particular information to someone else or to an organization that you can pinpoint. Right? If something is wrong, you can say that that particular person is saying something wrong. That particular organization is uh, giving out false information. But can you do that with Wikipedia? It is almost impossible for you to do that. Right? But is Wikipedia useful or useless? It is very useful, isn't it? Right? You cannot refer to it, but you can still look for information from it. Right? It is useful for you to get all those pieces that your friends say they have to Enter singing. I'm just going to be positive and just say that you are very happy to be here. Yeah. Or if a negative, as uh, if I want to look at it from a negative point of view, yeah, entering my class is almost the same as entering the toilet. You'll be singing when you enter the toilet as well. Okay, where was I now? We are talking about wikis now. Okay, alright? Of course, I'm sure all of you are familiar with Wikipedia. Alright? And that's what wiki is all about. Actually, wiki is something that enables people to share things. Alright? And of course, don't compare the wikis that we are talking here to the nature of how Wikipedia operates. That's an open space for all. Right? Even I have started several wikis myself. Right? Or put in information in wikis myself. Right? Wiki allows us to share information on a platform that is very much open space. Right? But the wiki that we are discussing today is slightly different. Right? The principle that governs Wikipedia is the same as all wikis around the world. Right? But the wiki that we are talking about here is a wiki that talks mostly on this, the idea of project management, right? And how Wiki is used as part, as a tool, right? To help us to manage project. And what do you do here in project management vis-a-vis -vis a Wiki or with a Wiki? You use it as a place to share ideas. Right? And why Wiki is such an important part of this whole idea of social network is this. Right? When you look at the global integrated or the globally integrated enterprise, a concept that we discussed earlier, right? One of the key components of a GIE is the idea that everything that happens within a GIE should be done in order, or in order to correspond to a much more transparent form of communication and corporate governance. Right? That is something that is an important part of what GIE is all about. Right? When you want to do GIE, one of the things that you have to be sure of is that your efforts within GIE correspond to some form of organizational transparency. Okay? The reason why we always uh, favor the idea of transparency is simply because with or within a transparent organization, right, things like education, the ability to teach people within the organization, skills transfer, the ability to enhance the capacity of those working within an organization, and 
the ability to disseminate information to deliver important pieces of information to those working within an organization is something that is very, very important. These are the backbone towards any form of organizational growth in any working space, in any organization, in any company, for-profit, non-profit in the world right now. Okay? And one of the tools that can help you to achieve this is Wiki. Wikis can help you to do that. And the reason why companies are driven to adopt tools and things like Wikis in order to fuel transparency, there's three major reasons. Number one, economic pressures. Right? You must remember that things are becoming more expensive now. And when I say things, I mean one particular thing. All right? It is not material goods that are becoming more expensive. In fact, if you were to look at it from an economic uh, standpoint, a lot of material goods are becoming cheaper. Computers are becoming cheaper. Technologies are becoming cheaper and easier to implement. All right? But one thing is very expensive. What is that? Human beings are expensive. All right? Getting people to work in an organization is not cheap, right? It's not just salary that matters. It's what we do with them, how we take care of them, how we improve them. And every single thing that you do and the money that you spend or resources that you put in the development of people within an organization requires, if you are an organization, to think about it in terms of what will be the return to my organization. What can I get back? Right? And to look at it from a traditionalist point of view, right? many organizations found themselves to be in a quandary or to be in a, to be in a problematic state. What is that problematic state? What happens if I train my worker very, very well and suddenly she, he or she left and worked for another organization? They don't need to do anything. Right? I've already trained him or her. Okay? And they will reap the benefit of that particular effort. What should I do in that particular instance? Right? I've spent so many, uh, so much amount of money, right? thousands of ringgit, hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars, right? training and developing my, my employees. Right? And now they have left and they have gone to another organization. Should I stop training them? If you stop training them, then there will be no growth. If you train them, you will be incurring costs and you will be taking on risk. So there is a pressure for you to find other ways to perhaps do it in a way that will not cause so much problem in terms of your, how you use your resources. One of the ways that you can employ is of course Wiki. Right? It enables right, the transfer, later on you will look at it, enable the transfer of knowledge and especially tacit skills. Tacit skills are much more of a practical based knowledge. Right, in a way that is perhaps more useful than the usage of traditional classroom methods, for example, right? or the theoretical classroom to teach or train people. Right? That's one of them. Number two, look at, of course, the societal changes within the society itself. Right? Within the greater society, we are now so used to transparency. Right? Social media, websites such as Facebook and all that has given us a lot of liberties of freedom in terms of expressing ourselves and knowing about things, right? For example, because of social media or social uh, media, for example, we don't, uh, companies are very, it is very difficult for companies to keep secrets anymore. Any bad things that happen can be shown and will be shown through social media, right? Bad news will be reported, all right? Terrible things can become viral easily. So we live in an environment where everything is out in the open. Even state secrets. Secrets in, in terms of countries and how they run the countries. Defense and things like that. Intelligence. All of those information are now out in the open now. Right? Apart from Wikipedia, we also have many other outlets that are similarly devoted into allowing people to divulge secrets, for example. Right? Uh, and that is something that we are used to. We are no longer used to living in a society where you can keep secrets anymore. 
right? What is what was once something that is kept in private has now become open source information out there. Right? Just look at your Facebook page for that matter. A lot of the things that people share openly in those um, social media networks are things that used to be very very private for people, but now we are very open to it. Okay, and that sort of change has also create an attitudinal change in people working in an organization. They don't expect their organization to keep things away from them. They want their organization to be open, right? To allow certain form of interaction between many different levels of management, for example. To allow information to travel freely within an organization. And one way to allow that to happen is of course to uh, use wikis. Right? That will create a, a much more open organization. Right? Some people uh, uh, like to use this particular term to describe that organization, a holonic organization. Right? An organization that is a reflection of the value that is being held by people working within the system. Right? That is a holonic organization, a much more open organization. Third is of course the advances in technology itself, right? Wiki is no longer a prohibitive technology, right? It is a technology that allow people to be much more involved in the stuff that they are doing. A classic example of the application of wikis in an organization is of course one of the things that you use regularly here in Inti started off as a wiki, black box. Okay. Blackboard started off as a wiki, right? an education wiki developed at that time by Microsoft and many other different organizations working together. Right? And from that particular wiki project, it became many different things. Among the different things that happened from or that occurred through that particular project was Blackboard. Right? Blackboard was essentially a commercial endeavor which came from that particular education wiki project, right? And until today, that project is still ongoing, right? And a lot of the stuff that you do right now, that you use right now on the internet, actually came about from that particular type of endeavor. Look at Firefox, right? That particular web browser came from a wiki-based project as well, right? Okay? And Chrome, right? Google Chrome also was born from a wiki-based project as well. Uh, you have uh, things like operating system OS, such as uh, Red Hat, for example, right? Which is part of what type of operating uh, system is that? It's not really a, a commercially available. It is available for free. Okay, an open source. Uh, what do you call that operating system? They also it also came about from a wiki-based project, right? And of course, the most famous wiki-based project is Wikipedia. Right? It started off as an open source wiki. Someone started an encyclopedia on the internet that is meant for everybody to put in information about things. And from there, it grew into a form of wiki. So technology also pushes, all right? the advancement of wikis. And wikis are not just Wikipedia, by the way. Okay? For example, in a lot of sites, right, there are wikis. Okay? For example, if you are into entertainment, for example, right, a lot of entertainment sites are built based on wikis. Okay? For example, Metacritic. I'm not sure whether you have heard of Metacritic. Huh? It's a website dedicated in terms of reviewing music, TV shows, movies, and video games. Right? That particular website, www.metacritic.com, was born from a wiki as well, right? Another very famous wiki that became a website, Rotten Tomato, okay? Rotten Tomato, many people used to go to Rotten Tomato to read reviews, isn't it? Especially movie reviews. Rotten Tomato is also, okay, was also born from a wiki-based project, right? And a lot of this time, this sort of endeavor, this sort of project, became popular and became well known through the advances of internet-based technology, right? So these are the drivers that push, right, the development of Wiki further, okay? So that is one thing to remember. So what are Wikis, 
right? So essentially, Wiki in its purest form is a free form editing tool designed to let knowledge grow organically and from multiple sources, just like your Wikipedia, right? Imagine an empty space, right? In that empty space, you can segregate parts or different parts of that particular page into different topics. And from that topic, you can grow that topic into multiple branches, right? And that is essentially what Wiki is, right? To give it much more deeper meaning, a Wiki can be uh, defined as a socialized form of knowledge depository. Think of places where you put in information and knowledge. That is very much open source. Everybody can chip in, put in their side of the story, and then let other people read and disseminate that particular information on and on and on. All right? And of course, the most well-known wiki in the world is Wikipedia, the fourth most visited website globally in the world. All right? Of all the websites in the world, it is ranked number four in terms of the most visited website. All right? And that tells you the popularity of Wikipedia. And until today, Wikipedia is still free, but they keep on asking for donations, isn't it, every time you go there. And if you have extra money, please donate. They don't ask for much. Right? Give 20 ringgit also, okay? Right? One time, only 20 ringgit, that can help them to sustain that particular thing. And it is useful, regardless of what lecturers talk about Wiki and all that. <coughs> Wikipedia is still a useful place. It is useful for me. I use it all the time to understand topic. If let's say, the first place that I go to to get an understanding about certain things, it's always Wikipedia. It might be right, it might be wrong, it might be complete, it might be incomplete. But at least it's there. It helps to open up discussion. It creates venue for people to get to know about things. And let me tell you, how many of you really need to go to the library to get information? Do you even have access to good libraries out there? Okay. Even if you have access to good library, especially digital library, which one is easier to use? The digital library or Wikipedia? Okay? <coughs> and regardless of what people tell you about Wikipedia, one thing about Wiki that we can always acknowledge to be true is that Wiki has the added advantage of being very transparent. If you say something false in Wikipedia, someone else can chime in and say that that is wrong. Right? There is no, nobody is going to stop anybody from saying anything there. Right? It is, in a way, one of the, the, the most abject expression of freedom of speech. Right? You cannot, no rules or no regulation, no constitution, nothing can govern the freedom of expression within a wiki. Especially in places like Wikipedia. Right? And that is also the reason why Wikipedia is not used as an academic reference. Why, like I said earlier, at the end of the day, we don't, we cannot ascertain where that information comes from. It is not attributable to anybody or any organization for that matter. And that is the real reason why you cannot use Wikipedia. It is not the value of Wikipedia that is, that is not good. It is the fact that you cannot put a name on it. Right? If you can do that, Wikipedia will be an awesome place for you to refer for anything. Right? And you must also remember, every negative thing that you can say about Wikipedia, that negative aspect is also available and apparent in all forms of knowledge. Journal articles, however great the peer review process is, or however complex and however uh, uh, however ethical that process might be, it is still open to some form of bias. Right? It is still. Some journal articles, for example, they are very biased towards qualitative type of research. Some journal articles, they are very biased towards quantitative type of research. Right? Some journal article is only biased towards certain cultural inference of research. Right? Some uh, journal articles, they are only open for certain types of uh, research paradigm, all right? So still, there will be some form of limitation to the sort of things that are published, even in academic journals, right? So don't think of that Wikipedia is bad because it is not reliable. It is not true. 
Wikipedia cannot be used as a source of referencing because it is non-attributable. That's it. There is no author's name in front of the wiki. Right? It's just information alone. Right? Until you can solve that particular problem, we cannot use wiki. Right? And do not think that all the other sources of information that you use is free from fault. There are also some fault, there are also some biasness associated with it as well. Right? Nothing is free from bias, including the media that the Western media that, that is supposed to be free, they are not free from bias as well. Right? Look at the latest case happening in the US, for example. Right? Okay? Look at uh, the shooting in Las Vegas, however tragic that particular shooting is. Right? The, the difference in terms of how people cover that particular tragedy is, of course, who who's doing the shooting, isn't it? Right? If it's an old white man, there is a lone wolf. Right? If that white man has a beard and has a vein in, in the middle of his name, he is a terrorist. Okay? Alright? If he's an African-American, he's a thug. Or a killer. Or a gangster. Alright? That is also a form of bias. Okay? So do not let things like that cloud your judgment. Alright? Wikis are a re very good source for information, including Wikipedia as well. Right? But it is not attributable. Hence, you cannot use as part of your academic reference. Okay? So what are the advantages of us using Wiki? All right? Within an organizational setting, all right, Wiki serve as the, uh, Wiki can give you these three distinct and major advantages. Number one, it enables easy delivery of tacit knowledge. I mentioned this one earlier. What we call as tacit knowledge are skill-based knowledge. All right? It's not really about theoretical knowledge. Right? When it comes to skill-based knowledge, for example, Wiki can be a very important tool in helping you build a library of tacit knowledge within any organization. IBM, as an example, is an organization that often uses Wiki right, as a means to help other organizations to build a knowledge library of skill-based knowledge. Right? And they are very good at it. Number two, Wiki enables a sort of knowledge delivery system that is safe and that generates a lot of internal support by those who are taking part in the program. Meaning what? Meaning that when you use Wiki, you don't feel constrained by organizational norms and regulations. You can say whatever you want. Right? You can put out opinion. Right? You are not fearful of your boss. It's not like in a meeting, for example, where there are decorum, there are unwritten rules. Right? There are certain things that you have to observe in a meeting, whereby a wiki is an open space. If you say something wrong, someone else can correct you immediately. And there is no sense of you are trying to achieve something apart from the betterment of your department or the improvement of your project. Okay? That's the number two. And number three, wiki can serve as a very good data mining resources for us. Uh, organization, especially internal data mining, in order to build what? In order to build what some organization might call a, a knowledge center. Right? You want to create a knowledge center, a place of reference where people can go to, right? in order to get information concerning okay, what is it that they need to have. For example, within University of Hertfordshire here in ET, we have our own wiki. Right? that we use to put all the information, important information concerning teaching and learning, concerning different types of forms that we have to fill, right? all the activities that we need to do as lecturers, for example, as support staff, for example, and the management have all of their materials within that particular place. So that what? So that here at NT, we can manage the operation of the University of Hertfordshire well. There in the parent campus in England, they also can observe and see what is happening here and make changes and do recommendation in a very quick manner as well. Why? Because the knowledge center is there. Right? And from that wiki, that particular knowledge will grow. Right? And it allows for good management of resources. Okay? Let us look at all of those advantages one by one. Right? How can we use uh, wiki? deliver tacit knowledge or skill-based knowledge or sometimes known as hard knowledge, all right? Now, 
Whether we like it or not, we know that a lot of testing skills are often learned in classroom situation. And this has always been challenging in a working environment. Why? Because once you need to have or create a classroom environment to teach people when they are working, you are taking away people from the workplace. Meaning time that is devoted for training is time taken away from doing their actual job. Right? And that can be annoying for the organization. It can also be annoying to the employees as well. Right? Why? Because the employees need to do their work. And when they have to devote some of their time for training, it means that there will be delays and uh, what you call bottleneck somewhere in the, the whole process. Right? And one more thing. When it comes to tacit knowledge, especially in the working environment, there are many things that you cannot actually train. Right? This is especially true for experiential knowledge. Things that you get through time, for example. Things that you observe when you have been spending time within an industry. Very difficult to put that sort of knowledge in the form of classroom theories. Right? In the form of database information. Very difficult. Right? So what do you do? Right? What do you do is that you can use wiki. Right? To create a depository of testing knowledge. For example, when you are working as a lecturer, you get certain information. There are things that you can share through a wiki based system. Right? Uh, in my old university, for example, in UITM, they tried doing it. Right? They create a system called Island. Right? And within that Island system, for example, lecturers can share their experience. They can keep diaries. Right? Almost like a personal blog or a, a mini blog of what they did. And what they do is that they share their experiences through that. And you, especially if you are new in that organization, you can go to that particular system and read about the experiences of other professors or other lecturers when they teach, right? When they are confronted with challenges within the classroom, when they are confronted with challenges with the learning process that students have to go through, right? That is an example of how you use Wiki in order to create an uh, environment where tacit and hard knowledge, and especially experience, uh, experience type of knowledge, that can be easily shared right, using this particular system. Right? And the reason why it works well for tacit knowledge is simply because the foundation of all Wiki is built on collaboration, working together as a team, team building, and especially trust. Right? When you see your senior, when you see a professor, for example, doing a very good job in the class, there is an element of trust in terms of that particular person is doing well. And when that person is sharing his or her experience using Wiki, for example, you know that what you are reading is a first-hand account of that particular experience, rather than a third or fourth-hand account that you get from books or case studies. Right. Sometimes books and case studies can be very, very distant right, from what is actually happening within an actual field of working or a professional field. Okay? And then, more importantly, through wikis, you can improve a sense of community that you enjoy within an organization. When people share, people become closer to one another. There is a saying, isn't it? Saying that everybody likes to say, sharing is caring. Right? And when you share, you showcase that sense of caring towards others. Right? And that can also improve the delivery of tacit or experience based on hard knowledge to other people. Okay? Next is the idea that wikis, is, uh, wikis are safe and supportive. Right? Why is wiki such an important tool for any enterprise to grow itself? Right? Number one, Wiki often promotes experimentation. It creates conditions where people can talk about their ideas freely and without any form of uh, inhibition or things that will bog down their idea. For example, we know that all organizations will have some form of red tape or some form of bureaucratic elements within it, right? Certain things that you can say, certain things that you cannot say, certain things, the decorum or rules of conduct that you have to follow. But in the wiki, you don't really need to follow all of those things, right? Especially true when it comes to delivering ideas to other people, right? You are much more open in receiving new ideas 
can you are much more, it is much easier for you to say things whenever you don't have to see the face of your superior while saying it. For example, in a meeting, you want to say something that is out of, um, maybe that is not so popular with your boss, you will be very fearful of saying those things, isn't it? Because your boss is there. But in the wiki, it becomes different, right? Nobody is there to observe you, right? Nobody is there to tell you that what you say is wrong in your face. So you can type and say things in a much more open way, okay? It creates a sense of giving and receiving assistance. Where the attitude in wiki is that everybody is chipping in in order to build something, right? It creates a sense of helping one another to grow the organization, okay? And then, of course, in order for you to achieve all of this, that's not to down. This. All right. Whenever you have wikis as part of your organizational growth or knowledge um, center sort of approach, right? You must remember to have your wiki to be accompanied by a strong ethical guidelines, right? And only the ethical guideline will come from this particular point of view, which is to encourage conversation and not arguments. Right? A wiki cannot work when you keep on arguing with one another. A wiki can only work if you have the uh, point of view of delivery, encouragement and conversational pieces rather than argumentative and uh, very defensive position about things. Right? And normally, wiki can cut through things like locality, time zone and other time spatial limitations. Like if I'm in Malaysia, Another colleague of mine is in Venezuela. Another colleague of mine is in Australia. Three different time zones, right? Three different geographical localities. But the same idea can be grown together by all three people when they share those information through wikis, right? So that is what we mean by wikis being safe and supportive. And the third one is wiki as a place or as a means of creating data mining opportunity, right? We know that Wiki is all about knowledge collection, creation, and communication. So whenever we have Wiki, what we have is a collection of data, a lot of data from a lot of projects. Lessons from past projects can be taken and can be learned in order to pre improve and uh, something that you can do for future projects as well, all right? And what happens is that this information can create a backbone system that brings about a culture of continuous improvement. That is why Wiki is often considered as a knowledge center approach. You create an ever-growing uh, resource of knowledge, right? That comes from experience, that comes from actual data, that comes from people sharing those experiences, right? And a lot of organization has improved because of the usage of wiki-like devices or tools within that organization, right? Uh, for example, you look at places like John Hopkins University, right? They have created a lot of opportunity and using wikis as a means that to allow the identification right, in terms of what are the training needed in order to improve the ability of their teaching staff to, to uh, improve their delivery in class, for example. So when rather than just asking what type of training that you want to do, they ask and then they also base their uh, analysis on the type of things that are shared within their blackboard system. right? Those are certain things that you can always look at in order to find ways to improve right? the relations within an organization where wiki can be used to get those data and you can infer those data in order to improve your organization. Right? So these are the three major advantages of wiki. Right? And the last part in wiki is of course what will be the disadvantages of wiki. Right? There are four distinct disadvantages when it comes to Wiki. And you can see that disadvantages have been played out in your relationship with places like Wikipedia, for example. Number one is, of course, trust issues. Right? Can you really trust information that is non-attributable? When you cannot put an author's name to it, 
You cannot put an organization's name to it. Alright? Can you really trust that information or not? That has always been an issue for Wikipedia. And that is also an issue in Wiki as well. Alright? It creates a culture where people can let go of certain things. Let go of certain responsibilities when it comes to project. So that is why whenever you want to initiate a Wiki program, you must initiate with attribution in mind. Meaning that when you put stuff in, it must be yours. You must have some responsibility to the opinion, to the ideas that you put into a wiki based system. Right? Number two, boundary issues, also very important. When you use wiki for project management purposes, how do you start and how do you stop with your wiki? Why? Because when people keep on giving up opinions, talking about what is it that they, are, they want to do, giving up ideas upon ideas upon ideas and upon ideas, how about the implementation part of those ideas? Who will keep track of that? Having ideas is fine. Implementing ideas are much more important. You don't implement good ideas, they become useless anyway. Alright? And in Wiki, sometimes you have this particular culture of people just delivering ideas but not delivering actual solutions. Right? Whenever they want to come up with ideas, oh, everybody be busy becoming their uh, an, uh, internal keyboard warriors. Everybody has an idea. How about doing that particular thing? Oh, nobody wants to do it. The idea I can give. Doing? No. I don't want to do it. Right? That will be a problem in any organization. Incentive to take part. How many people are willing to take part in a wiki program? Some say that uh, you are giving information. I don't need to give. Right? I just sit here quietly and read only. How many people are like that, isn't it? I go to Facebook and just to read only. I don't put in any content. Right? Same with Wiki as well. Right? It can be like that. There are people on organization that will just piggy bank on other people's idea. Right? They won't put in or they won't chip in their opinion within a wiki system. And finally, of course, there are also cultural differences as well. Right? And the cultural differences here is in terms of openness, right? Uh, when you think about culture, especially if you were to think about culture based on Hofstadt's uh, ideas and denomination of culture, power distance, for example. Some organizations have huge power uh, distance, uh, some have very close power distance. Malaysia, for example, is one of those countries where the power distance is quite big. In fact, Malaysia is in the top five in terms of power distance in the world. Right, number one is not Malaysia. Number one is, I think, is Slovenia. Right, where the power distance is absolutely huge. In that sort of culture, for example, you don't really like to say things that goes against the popular opinion of your boss, of your fellow workers, and things like that. So in those culture, a wiki-based sort of approach might not work. Whereby in a culture where it 